Shalom again, brothers and sisters. We're going to touch a little on the 2012 and um, some of these, uh, the, the cosmogenesis, the cosmo, in other words, the cosmo or, or the, the spirit world, the heavenly world, giving birth to the earth as well as that, that approach to the stars or the heavens and the interpretation thereof according to many different um, cultures and ancient peoples. This is why we can see a lot of correspondence between, say, ancient Egypt and, and the Dendera, what's known as the Dendera um, complex of ancient Egypt. We see a lot of um, correspondences between their um, uh, belief system, should we say, their, their, their timekeeping. I think the, the more correct um, phraseology would be um, their timekeeping. There was a certain particular peculiar timekeeping that was heavenly. This is an image of the, what's known as Dendera, Dendera, Egypt. Now, the new um, publication that we have out for the Rastafari and the Ethiopian Hebrew Book Club is The Witness of the Stars. And we've been touching on, on that book, on why the stars are important. And because, it's a, first of all, there is, there's a false idea. There's, there's, there's a, a popular ignorance, a willful ignorance, and there's a false, uh, a false um, gospel that has been put forward. The Bible warns us about this. There, there will be a particular, a particular apostasy from the true teachings of our Lord and Savior, and, the, and therefore, by extension, the true teachings of, from, of the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. Now, we see this as being manifested even over the past 2,000 years in the so-called Gentile or the white Western um, interpretation, but we can see a, even a more interesting picture among the, uh, among the native peoples, you understand, the indigenous peoples. I mean, we can boldly basically say the black peoples, and one of the reasons why um, there's a controversy around whether the Egyptians were black or white is kind of obvious because when you look at all these native cultures around the world, all of them had um, some some connection to God's clock, to the heavens, and utilize the heavens as a means of, of, of timekeeping and a means, for lack of a better word, of cosmogenesis. Now, much has been talked about the Mayans, the Mayans, that the Mayans alone speak about this 2012 is, is the popular idea and what some intellectuals some rational thinkers and scientists have attempted to do is to separate um, the Mayan culture from the ancient Egyptian culture and saying that these people, either some will say that one got all of it from the next or they'll say that they had no connection. But, you know, the truth is, is, is even stranger. You know, as we begin to learn the truth, it's really even stranger than the lies and the fiction that have been put forward. First of all, the heavens are important. We're not speaking from a so-called pseudo um, horror or horoscope, so-called um, a Gentile white Western misinterpretation of, 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 of the heavens. We are trying to speak indigenously. So when we're looking at the Mayans and we're looking at even ancient Egypt, we can interpret... Um, the monuments or the the so-called mythology from a modern perspective, because modern man thinks that all of the ancient people were were primitive, were savage, were heathen, and only since the white man crawled out the caves and came out the the medieval times did enlightenment come. So there's a popular mythology. You understand? That tells us that everyone before us was ignorant, primitive savages. Now, because of this false, uh, this pseudo, um, this, this, this pseudonymous, you know, this pseudognosis, you understand, or this false knowledge, this false science, which we more or less are all subjected to. I mean, one of the biggest things is when we talk about time. 
and and it's all basically about time. So let's explore this a little bit. This is another one of I and I favorite sites right here. You can check it out on the internet. It's uh, Siloam. I think it's Siloam.net. Siloam.net, and it approaches um it approaches an interpretation of um, reality of ancient mythology, so forth and so on. We've saved some of the matter right here, and we want to focus on this particular image right here. This is like some Maya speaking of the first father at the, at the upper portion of it and the first mother at the bottom portion. Now, what this particular site has done, you understand, know is now um, make a correspondence between what Martin Man knows, and this is a kind of an interesting chart right here, what Martin Man knows of the heavens. And one thing you all have to recognize is that billions of dollars are allocated to the study of the stars and the heavens, even if money for, for, for um, inner cities, for poor people, for social services are neglected, the monies for these kind of speculative scientific projects like looking at the heavens and counting stars is something that the rulers of the world or the people who are, who, who are in charge or in authority or in positions of, of rulership, they understand there's an importance in the stars. But through these opiates of the masses, or these watered-down uh, religiosities and these false theologies or, or, or what we call counterfeit Christianity. You know what I'm saying? Counterfeit Christianity. It calls itself of Christ. But then the first thing when we start now to look at the stars, you know what I'm saying? Not worship the stars. We're not talking about worshiping those stars. You mean if we look at the stars, if we want to learn what's going on in the heavens, then automatically we have become... Um, worshippers of stars. I mean, that is a faulty. That is a. That, that's just totally illogical. You know, saying that is totally illogical. So now, this particular site right here, this this one right here, as you can see, some of the the visual elements right here. Like we said, there's there's a lot here that has taken us even some time going through. Once we download it, save it, and we get some time to kind of go through it, and um you know, read it and take notes and, you know, it's a process. You know, education is, is, is a process. So it depends.